I have a notebook open in VS Code over here, but this notebook is a little bit special because you'll notice I'm able to uh, grab the slider over here, move it, and as a result, you're gonna be able to see that the value below updates. This isn't normal behavior inside of a VS Code notebook, and you might wonder how I got this to work. And there's a small hint you can see at the top over here, and that's right, we now have Marimo working inside of VS Code via a extension that you can download today. To do this, just open up the command palette as you would normally, just type in extensions, and then type Marimo in the marketplace. And here you are going to find it. Once it's installed, you're gonna be able to open up a Python file that contains Marimo notebook as normally, but now you're also gonna be able to see that there is a Marimo button to the right-hand side over here. And we also have lots of commands at your disposal from the command palette. So if you were to type Marimo here, you can also see that you can just open it directly as a Marimo notebook right now as well. In the rest of the video, I would like to explain some of the features that you can expect from here, but I do wanna point out first and foremost that the native experience that you have from a Marimo notebook in the browser can't be copied one-to-one -one here. We've done our absolute best to copy as much as possible, but there are going to be a few limitations, which I will point out in a moment. But that said, um, I'll just go ahead and run everything over here. We can see things update. Again, I have my slider that updates nicely as well. And from here, the next thing I would really love to show is maybe some other widgets. It's cool to have a slider, don't get me wrong, but my favorite widget in Marimo is the data frame widget. So let's see if we can maybe demo that instead. So I'm starting up a new cell here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install my favorite library to generate a data set. Uh, so from draw data, import the scatter widget. This is an any widget library, by the way. Also notice one thing that's actually quite nice is you get the native VS Code auto completions appear. So that is a feature you do gain by going down this route. And let's just add the scatter widget down below. So there we go. We have our little scatter widget. This lets me draw a little data set like so. That'll do. And I should now be able to make a cell above that is going to take that widget and that's gonna grab the data as a polar's data frame. That is a property that's uh, available there. And there we go, that's the data frame widget. Uh, we can sort ascending, we can sort descending, we can filter, we can do all the things that you're used to. There's also the search panel up here so I can search for uh, maybe a very specific label or some very specific rows where this substring actually makes an appearance. So. That's all cool, that all works. But from here, what I can also do is uh, turn this into a variable. I'm gonna store this in this uh, DF variable right now. And that's gonna allow me to demo another property of this notebook, and that is that we have support for other types of cells as well. Marima notebooks support Python, uh, just like Jupyter, we also support Markdown, but there is also specific support for SQL. Under the hood, this is gonna spin up a DuckDB instance for us, and that's gonna allow us to write some SQL. And one of the features of DuckDB is that you can point to a data frame from polars in memory. So I should be able to just run this and get the same data frame widget out. So if you're keen to write some SQL in your notebook, you can definitely do that. And just like in Marimo, you can also specify different engines. So if you wanna to connect to maybe SQLite or DuckDB or something in the cloud, you can also configure that to your heart's content. Now, if you're more used to Jupyter than Marimo, one thing that is good to know is that the order of cells actually matters less. Marimo checks the contents of a cell, it explores which variables are defined, and the order in which the cells are going to run is determined by where variables are needed and where they are defined. So if I were to change the slider value here, you should also see it update above. There are a few things that are different in Marimo in the browser though, and that's good to point out. In the browser, you could hit Command K and this would bring up a command palette, one that's very bespoke to Marimo. We don't have that ability here because in VS Code, we have a different command palette that you reach via Command Shift P. What you can do from here though, just type Marimo, and then you get all sorts of specific Marimo commands at your disposal too. So you can export this to a static HTML file if you like. Alternatively, what you can also do is open up the variables view. This will open up a new tab at the bottom. You'll be able to see recent notebooks. You're also able to see all the variables that are defined and you're also able to explore different data sources. So that is also a feature, it's just in a slightly different place than what you're used to in Marimo. You're also able to create a setup cell from here. That's also something I really like to do from time to time. But a very core command that's good to know about is this one, the toggle on cell change mode. Cells in Marimo, by default, will auto run. So if you update a cell, a child cell will update automatically, but you can change that behavior so that it becomes lazy instead. This will mark cells as stale when ancestors change, meaning we don't auto run anymore. So just to confirm that, I'm now going to change the slider value over here. And you're gonna notice that the cell above doesn't change. And what you're also going to notice is there's now this notification here. 
making it clear that this cell is now stale. When I click this notification, it is actually going to run and you're gonna see the value here update. And another thing you can also do if you change the value again is you have a button on top over here that's gonna run all the cells that are currently stale. This setting is particularly useful if you're dealing with big data sets and large compute workloads, because in those situations, you don't want everything to run automatically simply because of the compute that's involved. So for the rest of the tutorial, I'm gonna set it back to auto run, but if you're dealing with big data sets, just know lazy mode is definitely still available to you. One of the benefits of running this in VS Code is that you do get access to some of the features that VS Code has. So that could mean GitHub Copilot or whatever VS Code integration you like. If I were to point out one feature in particular though, it'd be this one. So let's say that I have a file called foo on disk here and there's a function in there called hello. It's a silly function that only prints, but you can see that the function does run. Because this is VS Code, what I can do is I can keep command pressed down and then actually click here to go to the function definition. Because VS Code in the end is an IDE, you do get some of this indexing stuff in the background that you can benefit from. And it's also a strong point of VS Code, so that's a feature that I think a couple of people will definitely like. A final thing that's really good to point out is that you can, of course, import a library that's not in the current environment. And when you do this, you're gonna get a warning and you're also gonna see this pop-up appear down below. To automatically install it, you can just hit install all and then you can rerun the cell and everything should work. In general, I recommend people to run Marimo Notebooks in a sandbox environment that's managed by UV, but if you wanted to, there's also a button you can click right here and here you can also change to a different kernel, one that you have locally, one that's maybe part of a larger project. That is also something that you can do. And there you go. Here are some features that you can use inside of VS Code if you download the Marimo extension. We are super excited to get it out there. Definitely leave comments down below, check the show notes for links, and also feel free to join our Discord if you wanna hang out with us and talk about these features. But it's also possible that this is your first time being exposed to Marimo. And if that's the case, oh, you're gonna to wanna to follow this YouTube channel because we have a bunch of fun demos for you. Also for those videos, let us know if there's any questions. Feel free to follow us and thanks for listening. I hope you give the extension a spin.